Thomas, I appreciate your coming. Forgive me for getting straight to business. Diaz has asked me to oversee a minor business transaction. Let's hope it goes better than last time. Which is why I thought of you, my friend. I dropped some protection at the multi-story car park. Pick it up, then go and watch over Diaz's men at the drop-off. Gracias, amigo. Diaz, apparently that angry midget runs this madhouse.
Let's see what that creep has to do with things. So, Congressman, let's start with you. Prime is up. People are scared to walk the streets. Nobody is taking public transportation. Police morale is at an all-time low. Everyone is stealing and maiming and giving each other the finger, metaphorically speaking. Do you think the government is doing a good job? Absolutely. And those statistics are interesting, but like all statistics, they are also irrelevant. Now, let me give you a better statistic, Chavez. In 1980, when I was elected, you were, according to the intelligence gathered on you, a man with no mission. You worked as a clown at birthday parties, corporate functions, bar mitzvahs, and go-go bars. You, realizing that you were a hollow man that can only take on the personality of others, decided to become an actor. And despite going up for 17 auditions that year, you only got work as a fluffer in a sex ed video. Your tax returns show that you earned less than $2,000. Suffering from anxiety, you attended group therapy for a year and considered getting a sex change. An idiot liberal felt sorry for you, and now you host your own radio show, write a newspaper column that lines my birdcage. You've got an ex-wife and an attractive girlfriend, although she's married to your best friend, and you're on top of the world. So answer me this. Can you really say the years of living under my administration have been bad for you? Uh, uh, we are not talking about me. This is pressing issues, not pressing Maurice. Yes, excuse me, if I may, can we get to the part where we press the issue? You see, that's what's wrong with this city. The liberals just want to open the floodgates, let anyone in a All the action I see. Look, you want to do something other than just shadowing me everywhere? Why don't you come along and show me if you're any use? I might just do that. The name's Lance, by the way. Tommy Versetti. Let's go. Clown was a funny act. Once voted best up and coming dietary restricted comic act in the whole of Vice City. I tried to take it to the Caskets, but Mount Scary Large was full. Besides, we are not talking about me. We are talking about you. Actually, if I remember correctly, you didn't win. Mary the Meat Tree Mime won. In fact, under legislation I am proposing, all of you vegetarians would be kicked out of Vice City. We were given canines and bicuspids for a reason. To open packages of potato chips. Hey, don't get me wrong. I always hated that bitch. What's funny about a woman not eating a hamburger? Or miming saving a chicken from the slaughterer's hands? Or her big act, I am a milk cow, a lactating machine for your breakfast cereal. How do you think a little kitty enjoyed that on his birthday? Not very much. There were tears, not laughter. I can assure you, vegetarian performance art must be stopped. Jumping Jehoshaphat on a pogo stick. You city slickers got more issues than a newsstand. Can we talk about public safety here? I ain't got all day. What? Is there a corn on the carpet in Candace you have to get to? Get some chitlins and grits in the oven? You better date with your sister, eh? Hey, be nice, man. I just wanted to talk a little politics and you made it all personal. Right. <laughs> Nobody feels safe anymore. Just the other night, I saw a man running amok with a gun, shouting he needed to defend himself. Gun sales are up. Book sales are down. Yeah, you got a problem?
You must be called Seth has new gun. Until more gainful opportunities arise. He'll be here any minute. We both better get a good vantage point. Okay. I'll take the balcony. You get the roof across the yard. Es que no me lo creo, man.
Don't make me hurt you. Psycho! the new science out there called genetics, I think, which is going to be really popular real soon. But what it tells us is all animals are pretty much the same from a genetic level. Oh, cool. Damn right it's cool, babe. You know what that means, don't you? I know, I have a clue. It means we've all got to start caring for one another like family. Okay, so let me get this straight. Like, my brother is a cockroach and my dad is a pigeon and my mom is a fly. Is that right? Well, sort of genetically speaking, but you're bang on, love. And you know what that also means? No. You could live this any animal you wanted to have kids. Unless you're married already, babe. You ain't married, are you? No, I just split up to my boyfriend. He didn't like me being on the radio. Whatever. So I sounded stupid. Well, that's my point, love. I mean, imagine if you'd been out dating a wolf or a cute little deer. He'd protect you and stuff. You're an to keep out intruders. But he wouldn't mind you being on the radio. He wouldn't mind a bit. Why not? Wolves and deers are no concept of jealousy of someone else's success. That's the genetistic variation between Homo erectus and spider monkeys. Jealousy and fur and stuff. Oh. Oh, indeed, sweet thighs. Oh, indeed. Would you like Mr. Z to tell you something else? Yeah. Everything you learned in school is a lie, babe. A lie. Take virology, for instance. You were told sharks are dangerous, right? Yes. Hobblers, babe. They're frightened of you. They ain't gonna hurt you. Have you ever tried cuddling a shark, getting down and dirty with one, relaxing it a little? Well, I have, and I'll tell you, it's very rewarding, eh, babe? Very rewarding indeed. Yeah, abs are bloody good, love. Once you cut it down with a little rubbing, it's like a swimming puppy, real affectionate and stuff. Okay, I'll try that. You should, love, you really should. Let me tell you something else. Come on, come on. Well, this is something for the guys out there, really. You know what a girl, right? You ain't got a clue. I mean, a female human, when she's on... anything intimate. You can't tell the difference. I know that only two women to take a forker monkey from the jungles of the Philippines. When she's on me, her behind sticks up and glows bright red and she makes a sound a bit like this. <coughs> and any fool or thing that can tell she's right and ready for action certainly clears up any confusion. Yeah, I guess it does. Or a female black widow spider. Now, they eat their mates after the deep. Oh. Yeah, I know. That certainly puts things into perspective, doesn't it? I've never done that. No, but you can do that now because you're the same. Well, more or less the same. I mean, that's the thing about my work, about genesthetics. Oh, God, the world is so complicated. And there are also lots of tiny differences between animals. You know what a species is, don't you mean? Yes. It's an animal which has other animals which are quite a bit like it. A dog is a species, but a cat isn't, because there's lots of cats. However, I've discovered out there in the wild loads of new species that regular science practiced by repressed blokes in laboratories hasn't even known about. Really? Really, I have. There's a horny pat bear named after me. Pat, right? Exactly the same as a regular bear, only it's got a big horny growth hidden right down its groin area. You gotta reach in, have it fiddle about, and then you find it. Completely different it is. I was amazed at that. I can imagine. Monkey. Only it's pulled after me, and if you have a rummage around inside, down in the back door, you discover it's got two digestive tracts. Two amazing. Look, that's gross. No, I mean, it's the science of Mr. Zoo. Get me down and dirty with animals, because I love them and I hate lies. Okay. 
It also says here you like zoos. It's a love hate thing, Dave. That, that, that's nice. But I'm certainly an expert. I know what I'm doing and I'm not afraid to that's expose beautiful. myself. Okay, well, I'm getting a little confused here. Why don't we take a break and when we come back, take some phone calls because all the buttons are really flashing all of a sudden. You're on K-Chat. The science of evolution has uncovered many of life's mysteries, like tadpoles or the pyramids. But the mystery of the armpit remains. What's it for? Why is it hairy? And why do men have nipples? But one thing is for certain, the armpit smells bad. Luckily, there's Pit Bomb. It's like napalm for your skin, or Agent Orange on your sweat glands. Pit Bomb stops unwanted bodily functions in their tracks. It's as effective as sending GIs into a peasant village. When you're fighting the war against personal hygiene, bring out the heavy artillery. This Friday night, it's the incredible sitcom that has captured America's heart. It Just the five of us. After a mix-up at the adoption aid... Bloody sharks, you no good. By the book, paper push of murder. Though they would have lived if you let me in the tank. I could have cheered them up. I could have done. Now stay away from me, you hear? No more. I live. Take head. And it's all down to you. What is your name? Tommy. I see you soon, amigo, I think. Shit. Where's that guy, Lance?
buried in my life. I wasn't sleeping. Like getting a hip replacement or funding a starving child in Australia. I feel all covered with flies right now. Call us. Pledge your money. Give 10% of your income. That's all we ask. And for that, you know everyone can be educated on the important things we discuss on VCPR. 10% is a really small amount. I remember when I was volunteering in Central America to make myself appear less shallow. The native peoples would give you 10% of their land for a pair of mirrored sunglasses. And they would run around me saying, Chicle, chicle.